if you're in an active job search and you're just not getting the interviews that you're hoping for, your resume is probably the culprit. And as a corporate recruiter, I'm gonna share with you the five most common reasons why I'm not calling you on your resume. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff, and today we're gonna be talking about the most common mistakes I see people making on their resumes. As a corporate recruiter, I've seen a lot of resumes, and I've probably reviewed tens of thousands of them in my career. Not only that, I've also sat down with hiring teams and the hiring managers and looked at the feedback that they gave on the resumes, because ultimately, they're the one that's making the decision to hire you. So it's safe to say I know what a winning resume looks like. And even if you don't have years of relevant experience, there are some things that you can do to really stand out amongst the sea of people. Keep in mind, you get five seconds of my attention, and if you can't grab me in that first five seconds, you're going to end up in the no pile. But there are certain things that you can do to get me to stop, pay attention to your resume a little closer, and perhaps even reach out to you. If you're struggling on your job search and just not sure what you're doing wrong, that's something that I specialize in. I have a website called alifeafterlayoff.com. It is loaded with tips and tricks on how to get noticed by recruiters, get through the interviewing process, and land the dream job that you've always wanted. I also have a training called the Ultimate Layoff Bootcamp. Now this is not just for people who've been laid off, but anybody that's looking for a better position. Now it's seven hours of dedicated training going through the entirety of the hiring process at major corporations. So I'll leave a link for that in the description if you wanna check it out. Mistake number one is bad formatting. When you write your resume, you really wanna make it as easy as possible to read. So no weird or strange fonts, let's stick to the basics, sans serif or serif fonts. Also avoid any weird colors. Black is the safest one and I just recommend using black across your entire resume. Also consider using some white space. We don't wanna see massive blocks of text. As a recruiter, when I open up a resume, it can look really intimidating if I see a ton of text, no paragraph breaks, and just an entire page just jammed full of words. And honestly, if the text is too intimidating and I don't feel like taking the time to dive into it, I'm just gonna skip on to the next one. Keep in mind that recruiters at major corporations are seeing anywhere from 200 to over 1,000 applications per role. We simply don't have the time to decipher hard to read resumes. The goal should be to make it as quick and easy to digest. We need to scan through your resume very quickly, find what we're looking for, and then make a decision whether we're gonna call you or we're not. So you really wanna make it as easy on the recruiter as possible to get that phone call by making your resume nice and easy to read. The second common mistake that I see is giving too much information. A lot of times it's also dealing with that same formatting issue that we just talked about, where you have a massive amount of text, you have a lot of information in there, and I as a recruiter don't need to see all that stuff. And for some reason, tenured employees seem to feel the need to justify their long careers by adding in line items for every single thing that they did. It's not uncommon to see people listing a dozen or more tasks that they did for each employer. Now, when you have five or six employers on your resume and you've got a dozen bullet points for each one, do the math. That gets to be a really long resume. And most of the time, it's just tasks. Here's the thing. Recruiters don't care about tasks. We care about accomplishments. That's the stuff that we wanna see on your resume. Listing out things like, I ran a daily report to figure out inventory levels is stuff that I don't need to see. That is a task. That stuff doesn't help me make a decision on you. It simply tells me that you're good at doing the daily tasks. It doesn't make you stand out in any way because everybody else doing similar roles is also doing those same daily tasks. What you wanna do is focus on the major career highlights, those story arcs in your career that you can draw from. And I'd expect to see no more than four to five major accomplishments per role. And if you find that after you've written your resume that's longer than two pages, it's time to sit down and ruthlessly edit. Person who's been in the workforce for a long time should only need two pages maximum. Now there's some advice going around that you should consolidate everything into one page. Sometimes you need a little bit more than that to tell an accurate story, so I'm fine with going to two pages, but don't go to the third page. There's no reason why you should need that much real estate. Be ruthless with what you put on your resume and only stick to things that are going to sell you. Mistake number three is not adding dates or an extension of that, not adding dates in chronological order. For some reason, there's some advice going around about people not using chronological dates and that they really focus their resume on the skills that they think recruiters wanna see. But for me, that's bad advice. If you've got 10 years of work history and two employers listed on there and the most recent employer is a management job or it's a perfect fit for what I'm looking for, and I jump in and start asking you questions, maybe it turns out that you only have six months of relevant experience in the most recent one, but nine and a half years in the previous job, which wasn't relevant, it becomes a much different picture about whether or not you're truly qualified. Not to mention, we also look for some longevity in roles. We wanna see some commitments there, and past performance is the best indicator of future performance. So if you have a history of only lasting six to eight months in a role, 
we can probably assume that you might only last six to eight months in our role. So we like to see those dates. And if I don't see those dates on your resume, I either have two choices. I can call you and try to go through an arduous task of putting together that puzzle with you, or I can just skip your resume and move on to the person who does have the dates. Which one do you think I'm gonna do as a recruiter? Again, you wanna make it as easy as possible to get the recruiter to call you. If you're worried about ageism, and let's face it, that's a relevant concern, there are ways to round that as well. The main thing that I would recommend there is to take your most recent experience, the relevant stuff that I'm looking for as a recruiter, and make that the majority of your resume. And then stuff that's early in your career, you can just list that down at the bottom as other employment, and then you can just list the titles and you don't have to put the dates. Before we get too far into it, make sure you consider subscribing because I actually put out new content each and every week. It's loaded with tips and tricks on how to get noticed by recruiters, get through the entirety of the interview process, and land that dream job. You're not gonna wanna miss a post. Mistake number four is not writing your resume with the recruiter in mind. A lot of times people write resumes with the thought that they're writing it for what they would wanna see or they're justifying things that they've done in their career and stuff that's important to them. You gotta keep in mind from the recruiter's perspective how we look at resumes. When we get a new role, we sit down with the hiring manager and we go through what's called an intake call. That intake call then calibrates us as the recruiter and the hiring manager to the qualifications, the experiences, the skills, and the education needed for this person to be successful in that particular role. We then create a job profile. When we take that job profile, we then start to recruit against it. If you're writing your resume based on what you wanna see on your resume and not what I'm recruiting for, the chances of you matching up to my profile are very slim. And you're just gonna be reducing the chances of me calling you for that interview. So you wanna use the job posting as a clue to what I as the recruiter would be looking for and try to tailor your resume to match that. Mistake number five, I see this one all the time. It's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. I kind of chuckle when I see it. People who write generic fluff. A lot of times you'll see this in the summary section, but I've also seen it in the job accomplishments area as well. Now what's an example of some generic fluff? Saying things like, I'm a team player, or I have excellent interpersonal skills. That stuff is pure fluff and doesn't tell me a single thing about you as the candidate. It's certainly not gonna be enough to get me to pick up a phone and call you to set up an interview. What makes you special from all the other 300 plus candidates that I'm talking to for this role? Because I got news for you, every other one of them is good at handling customer complaints in a timely manner. Instead, tell me how you improved the process or affected the bottom line of the business. Mistake number six is adding non-value added information. Listen, if you're an experienced candidate, I don't need to know what hobbies you're interested in or that you volunteer for your church's youth group. At this point in your career, that stuff just isn't important enough to put on your resume and it's certainly not gonna lead to a phone call. So unless it's directly related to the type of career that you're going after or the job that you're interviewing for, don't include it. Now, an exception to the rule is if you're a new college grad or somebody that's looking for an entry level role, in that case, it's probably okay to include that stuff. The next mistake is including pictures and or graphical elements into your resume. Just from a discrimination perspective, don't include a photo. I don't wanna know what you look like. I don't wanna know how old you are. I don't wanna know anything that's not job related. Besides, photos on resumes are very common overseas. And if I see a photo on your resume, I might assume that you need sponsorship. And in a lot of cases, my company can't do a sponsorship, so maybe I don't call you. You're just giving yourself another reason why a recruiter will screen you out. Now, of course, we're not talking about LinkedIn. That's a whole different ball game. You definitely wanna have a nice quality photo on there. Same goes for graphical elements. If you're using graphics on your resume because you think it's gonna stand out, and really think about it, the goal of your resume is to get me to focus on your accomplishments, and anything that distracts me from that is actually counterproductive to the end purpose of your resume. Now, of course, if you're a graphic designer, you're probably gonna to wanna to have some level of design in your resume because that's directly related to what you're doing. But for the rest of you, just stick to clean and basic layouts. Now, the last mistake that we're gonna cover is related to templates. Now I have no issue with using templates because I actually use them myself and I've created them for some of my students. However, I would advise using them with caution. I've seen a lot of different sites out there that offer resume templates and to be honest with you, a vast majority of them are pretty bad. Usually they're the work of a graphic designer who thinks from a graphic design perspective and not a recruiter's perspective. So they're gonna give you a lot of the mistakes that we talked about earlier in this video. So if you're gonna use one, just try to stick to a clean, concise template, something that's gonna be easy to read and avoids those common mistakes. And make sure that you change those generic details like your contact information, because you don't wanna have a recruiter not be able to contact you because you forgot to change that. Now, if you've been following along with your own resume and you're making some of those mistakes, it's time to maybe do a tweak on that. And remember, writing your resume is a fluid process. It's not something that you do once and once only and you forget about it. So even if you hire a professional to write your resume, it's still something that you're gonna update continually. It's not a once and done thing. This is a skill that you need to develop throughout your career. So get in the habit of frequently updating your resume. Something's not working, make a tweak, 
Keep on trying it. Eventually, you'll find something that works. And you'll be well on your way to getting noticed by recruiters and landing your dream job. Hey, if you found value in this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up because that actually helps other people find the content that they're looking for. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing because I'm bringing out weekly videos on how to get noticed by recruiters, get through the interview process, and land your dream job. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you on the next one.